Okay, the last part of chapter 8 is two-dimensional arrays. Again, please make sure that you watch the nested loops and the selection sort. Even though we don't need the sorting for this, the nested loops would be a good um, program to look at before we get into two-dimensional arrays. So two-dimensional arrays, if you can imagine, is just a two-dimensional mat, two-dimensional matrix. It is not one um, array or just one list going in one direction, but it is a two-dimensional array, meaning we have both X and Y axis, so it's like a two by two um, matrix is what it is. So for example, here I've chosen students and quizzes, students and quiz scores. So I have three students and I have two quizzes. So essentially I'm saying for every student we have two quiz scores. So I'll have three rows because I have three students and two columns because of the two quiz scores. I have constants for these. Notice um, students and quizzes, students three, quizzes two. So here's how you declare your two-dimensional array. Here's an integer array called scores. Notice my two square brackets, rows, columns. <coughs> So we start off with a few things. We're going to read the scores from the user and we are going to calculate the average quiz score for every student. So we're going across, if you can imagine that, we have a 3 by 2 matrix in this case. And for every row, we're going to calculate, we're going to total the quiz scores and divide by the number of quizzes, in this case 2. So first we, again, since it's a two-dimensional array, we have to go through a nested loop. For every student, we have to read um, X number of scores. So for every student becomes the outer loop. I again have I and J, my counters for my outer loop and inner loop. I goes from 0 to the number of students, one short of it, so 0 to 2, 0, 1 and 2, 3 students. I tell the user enter scores for student number and I put I in there. Uh, so it'll be student number 0, student number 1, student number 2. Or you can be a little bit more creative and you can add a 1 to the I. So it's a student number 1, 2, and 3. So it doesn't look odd saying 0, 1, and 2. And then we go through another inner loop where J is the counter. It starts at 0 and goes to the number of quizzes. I read the scores. So just notice how the two-dimensional array has two square brackets. Scores of I, J, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. If you think about your coordinates, uh, 2, 0, 2, 1. Those are the values. Uh, those are the subscripts and the values that we read into. So if we go through this loop, this nested loop, we would have read all the scores. Then we're going to print it out to the user. I go back and do the same nested loop. This time I say here's the score for student 1, 2, and 3. And we output it. Then we go on to calculate the average for every student. Again, the nested loop looks the same. For every row, we are calculating the quiz average. So students comes in the outer loop, initialize a variable called total equals zero inside the student's loop. Again, you have to actually go through this to figure out where you need to initialize some of these variables. Sometimes if you initialize it inside of the quiz loop, it won't make sense because for every student, I want to calculate the total of the quiz score and divide it by two. And then when I go to the next student, I want the total to be reset so I can calculate the new total for that student. So in order to do that, where do you put that total equals zero? These are some things that you have to figure out for yourself. So total equals zero sits right outside the quiz loop. Then I go inside and add the quiz score to that total, how many ever there are. And then I find the average and I output the average and move on to the next student. So when I move on to the next student, I initialize total to be zero again and then calculate the total and the average of the quiz score, and then move on to the next student. So let's build and run this. And notice, it says enter scores for student number 0. So remember, they're just integers, so I'm going to enter some integers here. So here's my two scores for student number 1, and student number 2, the last one. So it says this is what you entered, 89, 98. Those are the scores for student number 0, 67, 78. Those are the scores for student number 1, and 97, 56 are the scores for student number 2. And then there is my average. So some good exercises for you to think about would be to find the average score for 
each quiz instead of for each student. If you were to find the class average for each quiz, then you'd have to calculate the total uh, quiz scores for all the students and not the other way around. So those would be some good exercises to think about and see how you can um, switch the loops or what you need to do in order to get that done.